grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made and he has commanded us to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The Lord, amen. It is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has kept us another day. Another day for Jesus and I'm so glad Anybody just glad to still be in the number just one more time. Victory. Victory is our lifestyle. We welcome you into the sacred space that we call sanctuary where God is exalted. The devil is defeated and we have the victory. Amen. Victory in Jesus. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. God has been good to me. God is good to you. and God is good to all of us. We thank you so much for spending time with us this evening in our Wednesday night recharge as we get into the word of God. We thank you for your continued prayers and your support. We thank you for your sacrificial giving. We thank you for your words of encouragement. And just in case you hadn't heard it today. We love you and we need you to survive. Amen. I still believe God. I believe that God is able to do absolutely anything. Do you still believe it? I want you to type in the comments, I believe. I believe, exclamation point. Listen, God is going to honor your faith. Amen. I believe that God can do absolutely anything anything. We want to pray with you. My faith wants to connect to your faith and anything that we ask of God, he, he will. He will give it to us. So I need you to put my name and my family name in the comments. Put your name in the comments. We want to touch and agree. Amen. We want to touch and agree with you that God, the God that we serve, he still answers prayer and more. Why, preacher? Because prayer changes everything. I need y'all to type that for me, please. Prayer changes everything. Amen. God bless all of you who've already joined in with us. I want to talk to you tonight briefly about seeing things through God's eyes. Because sometimes we're going through things in life and we need to learn to see what God sees in us and through us. So through our pain and suffering, I want to talk to you about that because I, I believe, I believe that many of us are going through some things in our lives. Amen. And God is going to come to your rescue. Can I get a witness? I'm telling you right now, God is coming to your rescue. Have you ever, have you ever walked through a situation in life that left you wondering why God would allow you to experience the hurt or the pain or even the discouragement that has come into your life. And there is no doubt, no doubt that some challenges in life are the results of our own poor decisions. But for every believer, the reality is that we walk through hardships and pain, we will experience these things in life. Because Jesus, he told us, he told us, he told us pain and suffering would be a part of our lives. He says, I've told you. I've told you this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. That's St. John chapter 16, verse number 33. And I love that. I love that Jesus doesn't simply say we'll have trials and sorrows and then leave us out there to, to figure it out on our own. Instead, he says he promises peace. Hallelujah. And I want to speak peace over your life right now. I need you to type in the comments, the Lord promised us peace. 
Amen. You need peace in your situation right now. And the Lord promises us peace. And he reminds us that he has overcome this world, meaning that our problems are not without purpose. I want you to type that for me, please. Our problems are not without purpose. And I'm telling you right now, get ready. Get ready for the glory that is coming out of this. Amen. There will be glory after this. And so this is why the Apostle Paul, who experienced a lot of pain and difficulties in his life, and he can boldly say these words, something that was penned in Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. He pins that, and we know, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. And so our pain and suffering, yes, even though we don't like it, there is purpose behind it. So the Apostle Paul, he chooses his words carefully and notice what he writes. He says, we know. Hallelujah. That's, that's very key. We know. I want y'all to type that in all capital letters in the comments. We know. We already know. Amen. We know. For this man who underwent beatings and shipwrecked and being thrown in prison, Paul recognizes something that is absolutely essential for us to remember as believers that our pain is not meaningless. It has a purpose and not in just some situation, but he writes all things. Amen. All things are working together. I want y'all to type that for me, please. All things are working together. Amen. And so every individual you got to recognize when you go through the Bible, every individual that God used mightily throughout Scripture had to go through a season of a difficult time. Moses had to flee his family. Uh, Elijah had people seeking for his death. Queen Esther, she risked her life in order to save people. Jesus' disciples were all martyred for their commitment to him and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was beaten and crucified for us. And yet scripture repeatedly speaks to how our suffering never concludes without God's power working through it supernaturally. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So our pain and our suffering often sets us up to see God's supernatural work in our lives. It's working. I need somebody to type that in all capital letters. It's working. You got to be encouraged tonight. It's working. It is working. It's working. And so regardless of what you're walking through right now, hallelujah, regardless of what the challenges are in your life or the things that you may eventually endure in your future. These are the principles that the Lord wants us to know when we are walking through our difficult times. So the first thing I want to tell you is bring your pain to God. Don't run from him. Would you type that for me, please? Point number one, bring your pain to God. Don't run from him. Because when you run from God in seasons of challenges, all you're left with is your own limited ability to cope with what you are going through. And on the other hand, God invites us to draw near to him hmm, that we might experience his peace. Hallelujah, it's coming. That you might experience healing. It's coming. That, that you might experience a closer walk with God. And this is what scripture is pointing us toward. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those 
whose spirits are crushed. That's what Psalms 34 and 18 says. We're going to the word. Bible says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalms 147 and 3. That's what the Bible said. All of our answers are in the word of God. And so like our need for a surgeon to address the physical wounds that would happen in our body, God. God desires to conduct divine surgery on our souls, which results in a supernatural healing. And I want to pause and let somebody know right now, God is getting ready to give you a supernatural healing. I need you to receive that right now. Whatever area in your life that needs to be healed, God is going to give you a supernatural healing in spite of what you might be challenged with. And so when we bring our pain to God, we recognize that there is a purpose and there is a time that the one who loves us unconditionally will reveal his divine purpose through us. Amen. God is getting ready to reveal why it is that you had to deal with what you're going through right now. The next thing I want to tell you is point number two, fill your life with God's word and God's people. Point number two, fill your life with God's word and God's people. How we respond to pain is critical to how we process what is happening and how healing is going to take place. Think about what I just said, how we respond to it. Hey man, it's, it's going to actually critical to how we go through it. Uh-huh. So if you're you you treat physical sickness with the inappropriate medication, not only will your sickness continue, but there is a possibility that you might get worse. So but if you fill your mind with the wrong thoughts, you will struggle to experience the peace of God that he promised to us in scripture. But when you fill your life with God's word, hallelujah, all the answers are in the word. You got to fill your life with his word and surround yourself with people who speak hope and life and encouragement into you. Then your experience will be much healthier. How sweet the Bible says your, your word tastes to me. They are sweeter than honey. Psalms 119 and 103. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalms 34 and 8. So when we fill our minds with God's word, we are reminding ourselves of who God is. Hallelujah. I wonder, do you know him? My God, my God, do you know who God is? And so we replace the lies of the enemy with the truth of our God. Do you know who he is? Hallelujah. Anybody know who God is? Amen. God is. He's everything that you need. Point number three, don't be filled with worry, but overflow with worship. Would you type that for me, please? Don't be filled with worry, but overflow with worship. God bless you, Elder Ransom. Thank God for you. And so something powerful happens when we actively choose to worship through our suffering. It is a choice that you need to make, that I choose to worship over worry. So we aren't denying reality. No, that's not what I'm telling you. No, we don't deny reality, but we are simply redirecting our posture from one of worry to worship. And I want you to write that for me, please. Type that down. Redirect your posture from worry to worship. Hmm. Because worship changes our perspective. Glory be to God. Worship speaks about where our confidence and our hope lies. Worship redirects our thinking. Worship places the results in God's hands. I need somebody to type that for me, please. I got a little excited. I said, worship replaces 
the results in God's hand. Amen. Turn it over. Turn it over to Jesus. Amen. So when you worship God, amen, I am placing the results in God's hand. And I'm telling somebody who's watching me right now, get ready for favorable results. I need you to type that for me, please. All capital letters. Favorable results. Amen. So whether your pain is the result of something that goes wrong in the relationship, the challenges of life, some type of financial struggle, anything that you're going with in your health, some type of diagnosis, some type of anxiety, whatever your struggle is, if you're struggling with about what you feel about what is going to happen, when you begin to worship, glory be to God, you got to learn how to worship God through your struggle. And then when you start to worship him, let me tell you what I know. Spiritual chains begin to break so that you aren't ruled by your circumstances, but you set your sights on something higher. This is why Paul and Silas could praise when they were chained up in prison because they recognized that God was using their situation for the spread of the gospel. And I want to let you know that right now, even in this moment, be prepared for a turnaround. God is going to turn around. It won't always be like this. I need somebody to type that, please. It won't always be like this. Amen. Exclamation point. The next thing I want to tell you, point number four, believe that God will turn your sorrow into joy. That's point number four. You got to believe that God will turn your sorrow into joy. Amen. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And one of the paradox of our faith is that God uses pain for our good. Yes, it doesn't really make too much sense, but that's where our faith believes that even now my problems are working for me. Glory be to God. Somebody missed what I just said. Your problems are working for you, meaning that our biggest sorrows can result in our greatest joy. And so when you think about it, when you think about Jesus' greatest sorrow, the suffering and the shame, the punishment and the death for our sin, the result was great joy. What are you saying, preacher? Well, I'm saying the redemption for us and the opportunity for a relationship with God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And so Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 1, he said he comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. And so God has used our pain to strengthen us and encourage others to trust in God and to believe that it is working in spite of what you may see. Let me say that again. I'm talking to you. Whatever it is that you're going through, I'm telling you right now, it's working in spite of what you may see because our pain and our suffering won't last forever. I'm going to say it again. It won't always be like this. And I want to tell somebody right now, I'm getting ready to close, but relief is coming. Would you type that in all capital letters, please? Exclamation point. Relief is, is coming. Yes, because your pain and your suffering will not be for naught. It is not totally forgotten, but that sting the sting of it is going to be removed and eternity will be even greater as a result of it. Relief is coming. So as you walk through whatever you're going through today, yea, though I walk through the valley, I want to tell you right now, keep walking. I need you to type that for me, please. All capital letters. Just keep walking. As you walk through it, as you walk through it, you got to remember the words of Jesus. He 
He says, I'm, I'm leaving you with a gift. Hallelujah. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving you with peace. Because even right now, even whatever you're going through, God wants us to have a peace of mind. A peace that surpasses all understanding. He says, I'm leaving you with this peace. And this peace that I'm giving you, the world cannot give that to you. So don't be troubled and don't you be afraid. Hallelujah. I'm closing with that right now. Don't be troubled and don't be afraid. Why? Because he says, I am with you always, even until the end. Amen. God is with you always. Amen. He's there all of the time. I'm getting a little bit excited right now. I, I said, God is there all of the time. And he has left us with his peace. And I'm speaking peace right now over whatever chaotic situation, whatever difficulty that you may be going through. I speak peace over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for being who you are and for keeping us this far. And God, we ask that even now that you would help us, help us not to fear, but to boldly trust that you are in control. Even when our emotions are trying to bring us down and when we are in despair and the times that we cannot even talk about what it is that we are going through right now. Help us, God, help us to be still and know that you are God. Be our comforter and be our healer. And please bring us peace even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Glory be to God. I do pray that something was said to encourage you and to empower you to keep on keeping on. Amen. God is with us and he's already left his peace, peace I give unto you. We want to invite you to join us on this platform at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, or you can come join us in person. We're at 5474 Memorial Drive. This is a Psalm 150 church. We believe that everything that has breath ought to be praising the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. You got your own testimony. I don't know about you, but God is good to me. Amen. He keeps on doing great things for me. We'd love for you to come and worship with us. I'd love to meet you and shake your hand and tell you we're so glad to see your face in the place. So I want you to come on out and be with us. Listen, we are experiencing move of God every week. Miracles, signs, and wonders. We're going to testify that God did it again. Amen. But until that appointed time, I want to pray with you again and let you know that it's no secret. Be encouraged. It's no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He will surely do the same for you. Have faith in God. Glory be to God. That's my position. I want to help you build up your most holy faith. Keep your faith. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. Things are getting better for you. And we want to see you in this appointed time in this place. But until that time, continue to pray for me as I pray for you. We love you and we need you to survive. And let the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. It is our humble prayer in Jesus' name.